So if this didn't have cardboard in it, it'd be all good. I can't really show this happening on camera, it's so gross. In this syrup quick tip, we'll show you how to create epic food shots without an expensive cinema robot. So if you've been on the internet at all in the last six months, you've probably seen these crazy epic shots of food like coming together in slow motion. I've been watching these thinking, hey, they use robots to make epic food stuff. We make robots. Could we use robots to make epic food stuff? Matt, can you come help me? And I think we can do this one here where all the stuff kind of like comes together. I, I mean, I think what you're gonna do is break it down and look at each individual item and mm -hmm. the kind of camera movement it's doing. So breaking down the Hershey's shot, it appears to be made with a few elements that come together. We have the graham crackers coming in from the top and bottom while rotating, and these press against the marshmallows and chocolate layers that give a satisfying ooze. All this appears to be done with a custom programmed cinema robot. Instead of duplicating this exact shot, I think we can add our own syrup touch and do three fluffy griddle pancakes covered in golden syrup. For this, we'll use two Genie Mini 2s to give the pancakes some rotation and attach these to two Genie 2 linears, which when placed on magic carpet sliders will give us smooth vertical linear movement. Before we jump into full production with all of our lights and real pancakes and when everything is gonna get complicated and messy, we're gonna run a couple of tests just to make sure our jig actually works. We've got two magic carpets on the side. We've got a linear on top and then a Genie Mini 2 on top of that. That's gonna give us our up down movement and then our roll. And then at the back, I think we're gonna poke some wire through the paper and just use a single Genie Mini 2 to give the middle pancake its movement. Now, because we don't make a pancake attachment at Syrup, we're gonna be using aluminum wire and attaching this to the Genie Mini with a quarter inch screw. You can find these at any hardware store. Now that we've got everything set up, we're gonna connect them all to the same iPad and run the Genie 2 app, meaning that when we press go, all of them are gonna move at once. So now that we've sorted out the movement, it's time to sort out the food. We're gonna be doing big fluffy pancakes and it's gonna be a little bit of testing, but I think there are gonna be two ways that we make all of this work together. And the first is gonna be pancakes slash crumpet slash egg rings. It's gonna mean that all of our pancakes are the same size and then they can also rise up to be real nice and fluffy. And then we're gonna cheat slightly, but who doesn't cheat when doing food videos? We're also gonna pop cardboard in the middle of them. It's gonna mean that the wire can sit below it and hopefully the whole pancake won't flex too much. Otherwise, I'm terrified that the whole thing's just gonna fall apart when we add movement and having to repeat things over and over again. Attempt number one, not terrible. I have had worst first attempts. So I think it's gonna work. Um, we've just gotta make sure that I make the couple bits kind of a bit smaller because they're poking out the sides. But like, this is a sturdy pancake and the cooking method seems to be working fine. Cooking's done, now it's time to get into shooting. So we're just running a bit of a test setup with three of the not so great pancakes. It always pays to go through things first, obviously, um, just so we can fine tune the movements, get all of our lighting sorted before we commit to like the best pancakes. For lighting, we're using three of the Solar 6 from Light Panels, and we've just got that at 45 through some diffusion, giving us a nice big key light. And then for rim, we're using one of the small Lycos LED panels from Manfrotto, um, just running that through some diffusion from the back left-hand corner as well. As with most food stuff, we're shooting at a high speed, um, and because we want a good depth of field, we're actually cranking all of our lights up really bright to get a good amount of light in here. We've run some tests already, and it looks like five seconds is gonna be the sweet spot for everything coming together, but we're shooting at 50 frames a second, so we can slow down and speed things up as necessary. So from the first few tests, it looks like we're getting a bit of blooming on the wires. So we're gonna paint those black, um, meaning we won't get so much reflection. And we're also gonna poke a hole in the backdrop for the middle pancake to come through, meaning that we're not gonna have to do quite as much work in post. We have a nice key light coming in from this side, which we're getting this really nice glossy highlight on the syrup. So I just added a little bit of fill on the right hand side with this little bounce with this poly board. Um, and that should mean that we get a nice little highlight on the right hand side as well. And they'll just make the syrup look a little bit more glossy a bit more yummy.
I'm pretty stoked with our final shot. It should look good when we take it through to post. And now we're gonna get a couple of shots that fill it out and tell a bit more of a story. So we're gonna get some close-ups of the ingredients. We might even break out the red and get some really slow-mo footage of the blueberries falling or something like that. I don't know, we'll go crazy, have fun. We have our final shot and it's looking really good. So now it's time to remove the wires and get that magical floating pancakes. To do this, you can use any compositor. Um, I'm gonna be using Nuke, but you can use After Effects or you can even do it in Premiere. There are three main steps to the post-production process. The first is removing any wires that are overlapping the pancakes. When we shot this, we had the wire coming in from the side, which means we've got a little overlapping segment we need to remove. If we were to shoot it again, we'd put the wire in from the back, so we don't need to do this step. All we need to do to remove this little segment is track its location, rotor paint it out, and then just track it right back on. Now we have the pancakes with no overlapping wire. Step two is cleaning up the background. To do this, there are two ways. You can either replace the entire background, or you can use a clean plate and just remove the wires off that. Using a clean plate is really simple as you just need to mask over the wire areas and just switch them out. As our background is quite complicated and there's a little hole for where the Genie Mini comes through, I'm just going to replace the entire thing by pulling a key. It's good that the background was blue because it provided good colour separation making it easy to pull a key, however I still had to do some manual cleanup and rotoscoping. So the final step is colour grading and when it comes to food this is absolutely essential. Because the viewer can't taste the food, we've got to convey the deliciousness through colour. Humans are really good at picking up subtle colour variations in food. For example, it's very easy to tell the difference between a slightly unripe banana and a ripe banana. With pancakes, if the hue isn't correct and they don't look warm and golden, they're not going to look delicious and tasty, which is the whole point of this. If you're having trouble with the colours and dialing it in perfectly, I find it really helpful to pull up some reference images, as this lets you compare side by side. Now that this shot is all done, it's time to wrap it up with some music and some motion graphics, and we should be good to go. With Fresh Hawks Bay blueberries, the fluffiest griddle pancakes, and silky smooth golden syrup, the all-new Triple Griddle Stacker is here. Available now at Syrup. So I'm pretty stoked with how the video turned out. Yeah, it turned out awesome. The golden syrup shots came up epic. Yeah, much better than I was expecting. Yeah, definitely. Um, what would be your one takeaway from this video? Probably just the wires, mm -hmm. um, making them more rigid so we don't get as much movement and hiding yes. them around the back so there's less post time, but. Yes, that would save so much more time in post. Basically, I think if we'd spent like an extra hour and a half just reshooting that yeah. main sequence, yeah, definitely. it would have saved us like six hours of post. Yeah. <laughs> Considering we did this with something all controlled from an iPad, um, yeah, yeah. I think it was pretty impressive. Like it was really yeah. easy to set up. Yeah, real quick. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below of a filmmaking technique you'd like to see us try out. Catch you later.